E, gente! É, Edu! Conseguiu! Ei, gente, Dr. Barry já confirmou aqui pra mim, pedi pra ele mandar um pedido aí, daqui a pouquinho ele tá pipocando aí. Tô esperando ele aparecer. Gente, vamos entrando aí. Vamos sentando. É certo, porra! <risos> Desculpa, gente. É o Edu. O Edu fica falando palavrão aí, Eduardo. O pessoal aqui do Norte fala palavrão. No Sul, não. Ai, que apareceu um aqui. Quem que é que tá mandando pedido, gente? Não, pede, não manda pedido, não, porque eu tô esperando o Dr. Barry, tá? E Camille, obrigada, Fabi. Why we love Canberry? Because we can have berry on keto. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's why I love Dr. Berry. Because we love berries. E gente. Ei, Ramona. Oi, gente. Tô esperando aqui. Ele confirmou. Ele acabou de falar comigo que ele já estava pronto para entrar. Mas sabe como é que eu sou, né? Da 15 horas em ponto, eu entro. Ai. Vamos esperar, Dr. Barry, entrar. Dr. Barry. Vou deixar gravado, gente. Obrigada, Andréia. Aqui. Ah, eu tenho, que, eu tenho que mandar pra ele. Peraí, acho que ele não tá... Acho que ele não tá... Ele tá respondendo aqui, ó. Acho que eu tenho que mandar pra ele. Vamos ver se ele vai entender agora. Ei, Cláudia, manda um abraço pra Mafê. Pode deixar. Aqui, ó. Ele já viu aqui. Vamos esperar. Ele, se ele me segue, porque se ele não segue... Ah! Ah! Eu já tinha mandado pra ele. Eu já tinha mandado. Eu já tinha mandado. Meu perfil é aberto. Qualquer um consegue mandar pedido. Qualquer um consegue. É, vão mandando aviãozinho aí, gente. Vou deixar gravado. Não, ele... Aqui, acho que agora é ele. Deixa eu ver. Ô, gente, não manda pedido, não. Por favor. Deixa pra ele. Senão me atrapalha aqui. Isso, vão chamando a galera até ele entrar. Vamos ver. É, não, algumas pessoas mandaram pedido para participar. Ei, Cássia. Não, eu, como, é, como é que chama, gente? Deixa eu ver aqui. Can the very end Gra aqui apareceu aqui aqui ó acho que agora foi 
Ah, tá. Ele entrou, né? Ei, mãe. Oh. Hi, Dr. Terry. Finally. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Fine with you. Doing very well. Good morning. Good morning. It's 9 o'clock there where you are. Nashville, yes. Tennessee. Yeah, here is um, uh, 15, 3, uh, 3 in the yeah. afternoon. Brazil is 11 in the morning, so we have three countries watching us at this time. <laughs> Excellent. Good. So, doctor, it's an honor to, to have you here in my Instagram page today. Uh, you are on one of the first uh, role model, low carb role models I had in the beginning of my studies. Your book, Lies My Doctor Told Me, had inspired me a lot, a lot, and still inspires me to today. And uh, it's good to have you here to show people the truths of uh, medicine and health. I think we have this, uh, this role here, this obligation to show people the truth because we've been uh, um, misinformed so uh, many years, so decades. And uh, I'm new at this job right now, but you're here in 20 years. You're a medical physician, um, a family physician in your city, uh, author of uh, bestseller, Amazon bestseller, and um, have um, uh, started to show uh, people what the real medicine is about, which, uh, which is a great honor, great, uh, have great importance to, to people. And uh, I would like to tell you uh, that, um, to, to share with you the thoughts of Eric Westman, Uh, to start here in a um, little introduction. Uh, Eric Westman, in his last presentations, he uh, told about the new normal in uh, this uh, blood test because <laughs> blood tests, uh, the reference value is made by regular people. Regular people, for most people that, that doesn't know, um, that a reference value that comes in blood tests is not something uh, to achieve, it's not, not uh, something good to, to be achievable. It's made from the majority of the people who eat crap food because majority of people eat badly, so bad. Then uh, Eric Westman uh, says in his uh, last presentations that we should uh, have a new normal for, for these blood tests, for these references. And uh, when we deal with uh, cholesterol levels, it's more important than ever. And that's the introduction I would like to make to <laughs> a little uh, for um, yeah, you to uh, teach us yep. what is exactly a cholesterol and the, the saturated fat and all this mess, please. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Welcome. So first, let's go back and talk about the lab tests that your doctor will order for you. Now, in the first few years of my medical practice as a doctor, I just assumed that the, the normal range, so exam, for example, if you got your kidney function chain, checked or you got your iron status checked or you got any test, you got your cholesterol checked, I assumed that there had been years of research in determining that normal range that you'll see you'll on your lab results you'll see your result right but then out to the right will be a range in parentheses and so i assume that that was that there had been a lot of thought and research put into that but that's actually not true at all and when i started researching that i was blown away to discover that basically how they do this is they just grab a hundred relatively normal people off the street, they check their, they draw their blood, they check their cholesterol, and then they, they form a distribution curve. And it's usually only a few hundred people. You would think they would check the cholesterol levels of 10 or 20 or 50,000 people, uh, only healthy people, only people who are eating a great diet. That would seem to me to make good sense, right? But that's not how they do it. They just check, they just grab random people off the street who don't have any obvious pre-existing disease. But as you know, you can have you can have severe pre-diabetes, you can have severe metabolic syndrome and appear pretty normal. And and, yes. and if they just check a small amount of lab work, you can look normal even on your lab results. And so they'll check these people's labs and then they form a bell curve of distribution. And then they say, okay, here's, here's one standard deviation from the mean in each direction. 
that will be our normal range for these lab tests. And yeah. so I totally agree with Dr. Westman, who's a, a very wise individual. Anybody would uh, do themselves a favor by following him on all his social media. He's very articulate, very intellectual. He's very intelligent, and he's got good common sense as well. And so I agree with him. We need to we need to relook at all of the normal lab values that are that are considered normal. Another great example is a TSH. There are many labs that still consider a TSH for thyroid of five yes. to be yes. normal. And I don't yes. think a, a TSH of five is high. probably ever normal for a, an yes. optimized human being. And so, yes, you're absolutely right. The, the reference range that most doctors consider to be state of the art is absolutely being called into question, and I think rightfully so. So when that comes to cholesterol, you have to understand when they were establishing the cholesterol reference range or the normal range for cholesterol, every single researcher considered cholesterol to be a bad thing. They considered yes. elevated cholesterol to be a bad thing. Uh, it's never been proven. It's never been more than just a hypothesis. It's never even made it to the status of theory. It's still just a hypothesis, which means an idea that someone had. And all the research that they did to try to prove that having an elevated cholesterol is bad for your health has fallen on its face. It, they, they've never been able to prove that. And actually, there have been multiple studies showing that having a higher cholesterol is actually protective against cancer, protective against, actually protective against heart attack and stroke, and people with the higher cholesterols tend to live longer. Yes. And so then you're, you're faced with, oh, my cholesterol was 205. My doctor freaked out because that's way above what the normal range should be, and now my doctor wants me to take a pill every day or an injection every two weeks to lower my cholesterol because my doctor said that will prevent heart attacks and strokes and help me live longer. Some doctors even say stupid things like take this injection every two weeks or take this, this Lipitor or Crestor or Zocor every day and it will clean out your arteries. I've had multiple people tell me that their doctor said that. And not only is there no research proving that, that statins help you live longer or protect you from cancer, there's definitely no research that shows that statins will clean out your arteries. That's complete and utter uh, fairy tale mythology. It, it, that's just completely made up in the yes. doctor's mind. So I think that all the normal ranges need to be revisited, restudied. And I think once when we start to do that in earnest, we're going to find some of these things are literally pulled out of thin air. Some people would say that they've been pulled out of something else, but I think uh, being they're just pulled out of thin air and say, okay, this looks like that should be normal. That's, that is the state of the art of laboratory medicine, and it's atrocious, it's embarrassing, and it's actually harmful to patients. Yes. Doctor, uh, one thing that, uh, that uh, keeps me um, very impressed is that uh, doctors um, don't know that ratios that have to do between triglycerides and HDL. Some of them I, I, I have uh, said to my clients to, to discuss this to their doctors because their doctors, the first number above the, 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 the regular, the reference, they want to prescribe statins. Yep. And so if you have to take statins, okay, I, will, I, will, I won't uh, argue, but you have to, to discuss this with your physician because you have to be sure that you need statins. First of all, how is uh, your uh, ratio? And uh, uh, patients started to, to make this question to doctors, and most doctors does, don't know these ratios. Is it yep. possible? Yeah, it always, How it's good? absolutely possible. And if you, if you want to talk about the ratios, you, you add a layer of complexity, which I personally don't think is necessary. Uh, because here's, here's the question I would ask your doctor. So the typical person who's eating a ketogenic diet, a, a diet high in fatty meat, a carnivore diet, a very low carb diet that's, that has lots of fatty meat and seafood and eggs and butter, their, their total cholesterol may be normal or it may be elevated. Their LDL may be normal or it may be elevated, but almost without exception, if they're eating a low carbohydrate enough diet, their triglycerides are going to be in the very low normal range yes. or within normal limits. Yes. yes. And their HDL cholesterol, which is the other good cholesterol, it's going to be very high. It's very high. Normal or high normal. 
And yeah. so right there, in, in my estimation, we're done. I don't really care what your total cholesterol is, and I don't really care what your LDL is. Okay. If you have a, a low normal triglyceride level and you have a high normal HDL, those are, they have been intimately related to your risk of heart attack and stroke. If you have high triglycerides, that's very dangerous. If you have a low yes. HDL, that's very dangerous. And so if you have corrected those two numbers, in my opinion, we're done with your lipid panel discussion because you, you're doing everything you need. Your body makes cholesterol. Your body makes LDL, cholesterol. Your body wouldn't make those things if they were dangerous. And so I, it's my opinion that your body moves your total cholesterol and your LDL levels right to where they need to be. Your yes. diet is what will falsely elevate your triglycerides and falsely depress your HDL cholesterol. And once you've corrected your diet enough to correct those two numbers, you are much, much healthier. You're much less likely to develop cancer. You're much less likely to have a heart attack and a stroke. I don't care what your total cholesterol and your LDL cholesterol are. So if your LDL is um, you, uh, inside a context of a, a good uh, diet, of a proper human diet, you probably will have a low triglycerides, a high HDL, a high LDL, but a good LDL because the particles are the, the good ones, the big, exactly. the fluffy ones. Yeah? Exactly. And the, Another thing people that people need to understand something. is that your body makes LDL cholesterol. Your yeah. body uses LDL cholesterol for hundreds of different things in the human body. It plays yes. an intimate role in your immune system. It moves different uh, proteins and, and lipids all over your body. It's basically the transport system to move lipids and fatty acids and cholesterol around your body. Your body uses your, it makes cholesterol every day. Three grams of cholesterol your body makes every day. That's 3,000 milligrams. And it uses your cholesterol to make things like vitamin D, like testosterone, like progesterone, like your adrenal hormones, like estrogen. Your body uses cholesterol as a building block for hundreds of different things in your body. So how could that be bad? How could your body get that wrong? It also uses cholesterol as a as a healer as a spackler as a smoother outer so if you've eaten an inflammatory diet and you've got damage inside your arterial wall your body will also use cholesterol to try to patch the damage yes, in yes. your arterial wall and that's why it's a we see yeah. plaque build up in the arteries that's it's not the fault of cholesterol that you have plaque build up in your arteries it's the fault of a, an inflammatory high carbohydrate diet that's what damaged your artery now you're yes, trying yes. to use cholesterol to fix it. Yes. So if you have um, total cholesterol of, um, of, of about 300 and you're inside uh, this context of a ketogenic diet or carnivore diet, low-carb diet, uh, eating good food, no vegetable seed oils and this kind of stuff, you are good because you're going to have good numbers. And if your numbers are high, they have quality. Yeah, of and for, uh, just person. speaking for me personally, my total cholesterol level stays around 250, and my or, or stays around 350, and my LDL 350. cholesterol stays around 250. That's where I hang out. But my triglycerides are very low normal, and my HDL is very high normal. So I don't worry about my total cholesterol being high, and I don't worry about my LDL cholesterol being high. My body is making those things. It, it needs them. Yes, I, I, I've been noticing that people that come to me with their exams to take a look, and it's always the total cholesterol is around 250. It's all this average, every yeah. time. And triglycerides, low, HDL, high. Um, there is, a, I think there is a, a dissonance, a cognitive dissonance about this. In, uh, uh, doctors have this difficulty. Just, it's hard for them to comprehend. Yes. Because I always had a, an HDL low my whole life. And I always practice a lot of exercise. Yep. But now that I'm keto, I do half of the exercise I used to do. My HDL is double what is it used to be in the past. Yep. And doctors, when you ask them how how do I what should I do to increase my my levels or my, my HDL levels, and they always said to me you have to do more exercise. But I do a lot of exercise. I used to run 
uh, 30 uh, kilometers per week. I did uh, a muscle training a day uh, th three, four times a week. It's not the case. I exercised myself for almost 30 years. It's not them exercise. It's yeah. food. Yeah, it's it? always food. And the answer to every question is it's your food. That's, that literally is the foundation of all health. And so it, lifting heavy weights, you can raise your HDL a little bit. There's a little research to support that. But nothing raises your HDL faster than eating lots of fatty meat, lots of egg yolks, lots of butter. Yes. That's how you raise your HDL a meaningful amount. Yeah. And I'm the, I'm the same as you. I have, I've had low HDL my entire life. And I used to live in the gym. I used to lift weights and work out and run on the treadmill. And that might have raised my HDL one or two or three points. Yes. But it was always point. still low, right? But when yes. I started eating a fatty meat heavy ketogenic diet, my HDL went back up to normal immediately and is actually in the upper end of normal now. And uh, some people were able to even raise their HDL above the normal range by eating lots of fatty meat. That works better than anything. Yes, yes. That, that's funny because they, they tell you to not eat saturated fat and tell you to raise your LGL levels. <laughs> it's a misinformation, complete misinformation. Yeah. Uh, other thing I, I would like to, to ask you uh, about um, a patient that is um, a little bit uh, insecure, what about my cholesterol levels? Fernanda has told him, Dr. Barry has told so, but I'm, I want to check. What yep. kind of exams really works? For that, as far as blood tests, you mean? Yeah, a blood test, or uh, for example, a uh, um, calcium score, DEXA yeah. scan. Yeah, and so I, I really consider the most important blood test for metabolic health that you can get done to see if you are hyperinsulinemic, insulin resistant, if you're pre-diabetic, if you're type two diabetic. If you have hyperglycemia, I consider the most important test to be a hemoglobin A1C, a C peptide, and you can also use a fasting insulin, but you have to be fasting for that. Whereas with a C peptide, you don't have to be fasting. And then the triglyceride level and the HDL level. Those are the things that are going to tell you, are you truly metabolically healthy or do you still have work to do? And then uh, an excellent indicator of just how bad your coronary artery disease is, which is the buildup of plaque inside your heart arteries, is a calcium, uh, a calcium score, a CAC score. And yes. so if, you, if your doctor's trying to get you to take a statin or to take one of the injectable drugs you take every two weeks, like Repatha, in order to lower your LDL cholesterol, Say, hey, why don't you check? Why don't you check my coronary artery calcium score yeah. and see what that yeah. is? Because most people, after they've been eating fatty meat, keto, or carnivore for a few years, their CAC score is going to go down. I've seen I've seen it go down in hundreds of people. And so, when you get your CAC score back and it's a beautiful number, it may be zero or it may be in the you know under a hundred. That's an excellent indication that you don't have any blockage in your coronary arteries to speak of at all. And most doctors, that, that will help them with their cognitive dissonance that they may have. They're like, well, God, is, this guy's total cholesterol is 350, but I did his CAC score, and it, his arterial arteries are clean. So I, I don't understand why that is. That shouldn't be that way, but it is. So maybe keto is a good thing. Maybe he doesn't need to take a statin. Maybe he doesn't need the injectable every two weeks. And I think that checking those kinds of tests, so then you can say to your doctor, well, doctor, how am I at risk for a heart attack? I know my total cholesterol is high, but look at my hemoglobin A1C. It's beautiful. Look at my C-peptide. It's beautiful. Look at my levels of inflammation. They're perfect. Look at my CAC score. It's wonderful. Am yes. I really at risk for a heart attack yes. or a stroke yes, because my total cholesterol is high? Yes. yes. Yeah, and that helps our doctor to move out of their old false paradigm because a paradigm is a way of thinking that you, you kind of look at the world through certain lenses. And most doctors have never considered a higher cholesterol to be healthy. They've never, they've never, they've never thought about the relative weight of importance. How important is an elevated A1C 
versus an elevated total cholesterol level. Which one's more dangerous? And when you make your doctor start thinking like that and they start looking at the research again, they quickly understand, oh my God, someone who has a, an elevated hemoglobin A1C, they're at much higher risk of a heart attack and stroke and all the other chronic diseases than someone who has a normal A1C but a high total cholesterol. Yes, I think that our um, uh, main um, uh, difficult today is uh, doctors, because doctors uh, have um, very uh, misinformed knowledge about <clears throat> um, metabolic issues. Yep. Uh, mostly here in Portugal is worse because they work um, um, above a uh, whole. Uh, organization guidelines so it's a tricky thing yep. so uh, people patients start at keto they are going they are do doing very well and they go to their doctors their exams are fantastic and doctors won't give them statins it's uh, unbelievable and i have to explain them that's why all my content on my page uh it's uh, health driven I don't deal just about keto because keto is so easy. It's so easy to do keto. Uh, you uh, can hire a, um, my, my job and I will teach in one month. You're great to, to go the, for the rest of your life in keto if you want. Yep. But the problem is every time you go to your doctor, people come from, from the consultation afraid about uh, uric acid because meat is bad. Uh, saturated fat is bad and sugar is okay. Yep. So, and and doctors don't prescribe uh, HB1C. They don't prescribe insulin uh, to calculate HOMA IR. They don't prescribe this kind of exams that will show exactly what is dangerous in a metabolic issue. That is sugar uh, insulin resistance, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. So we have, we have and I, I think that. Healthcare providers, doctors, uh, nurse practitioners, physicians assistants, I think they don't realize the power of saying, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I, I've studied this further and now I realize I was giving you bad advice. And yes. most doctors think that they would be, they would just be run out of practice if they ever said anything like that. They feel like they have to be right all the time. And so many doctors. <clears throat> even after they start to suspect that cholesterol is probably not that dangerous and that a, a slightly elevated A1C is probably very dangerous, they still are reluctant to, to start to tell their patients, hey, I was wrong about that. You need to really focus on lowering, lowering your carbohydrates. And I think if healthcare providers could just grasp the importance and the power of telling their patients, hey, I was wrong about that. I gave you bad advice, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you back to good health because we're going to make some changes and we're going to get you healthier. People love it that their doctors are still learning. People, uh, they respect that, that you, have, that you have the courage to say, hey, I was wrong about that, that cholesterol thing. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. And I, I really hope the healthcare providers start to understand People want you to be a lifelong student. They want you to be a lifelong learner. And they want you to be man or woman enough to admit when you made a mistake. Patients appreciate that. So yes. you need to say, hey, I was wrong about trying to push this statin on you. I, I apologize for being rude about that. What we're going to do from now on is we're actually going to focus on getting your labs that actually matter to protect you from heart attack and stroke. We're going to focus on those from now on. And I hope you can forgive me for that bad advice, but I'm now a smarter doctor than I was, and I'm going to be able to help you better. Yes, I read this on your book. You tell how, how, uh, how you used to work in the past. And it's interesting that you, you work in the past. You saw a family that went to your uh, consultation and to, to consult with you. And they continued uh, to, to be obese after all your advice you gave them. Yep. And you, you thought, oh, they must be lazy. They must be eating uh, in the middle of the night, attacking the ref refrigerator. And something is, go is going wrong it's not i someday you realized it was the guidelines that were wrong and not it's not it, it was not people's fault right it was the guideline that were wrong 
Right. And the way that I knew that it wasn't my patient's fault is because I was also getting becoming morbidly obese. I was also becoming pre-diabetic. And I definitely was following my own advice, right? I, knew, I lived with me, so I, oh, knew yeah. I, was, I was following the guidelines, and I was getting steadily more obese and steadily more diabetic. And so that, that was really the wake-up moment for me when I had to say, maybe, maybe my patients are following my advice. Maybe it's possible that I'm just giving bad advice. Yes, I think uh, it's so overwhelming when you confront it, uh, you um, start this uh, low carb, uh, start this new lifestyle, low carb lifestyle, and you have a shock to see that everything you knew was wrong. I think just when uh, you uh, live this by your own, when you have a disease and you get cured, when you are so busy and you get thin uh, in an you know, easy way, relax, relative, easy way. So you, you have, you live this problem, this issue. So from now on, you're going to, to it change your life. I think people uh, that say, that still believes in the guidelines and people that in the health, um, physicians, uh, doctors, nurses, uh, dietitians, they haven't had still uh, yet um, a wake up call. Yeah, personal wake up call. Yeah, exactly. And now that the American Diabetes Association has included a low carb diet as an acceptable way of eating for diabetics, yes. that's a that's a huge step. And so I would talk to every doctor out there, every dietitian, every nutritionist. If you are uh, have a BMI over thirty, if you are obese or morbidly obese, if you are pre diabetic or type two diabetic. If you have hyperinsulinemia, you you need to really think about that. Are are you giving people good advice? Yes. If you're not able to correct your own metabolic disease, are you really able to give advice to other <laughs> yes. human beings? I think that's a valid yes. question. Yes. Because you see, you see keto people, carnivore people, uh, they are all very strong and lean. Everybody is very hard to find someone in, in our in, in, that works with keto and with low carb that it's not lean and strong. Yes, everybody because it's so easy to get this way. Yeah, if they're it's really, if a person who is really eating a fatty meat heavy keto diet or a carnivore diet, they really don't have a choice. They are going to lose body fat. They are going to put on muscle. Their, all their lab values are going to move back towards normal. Uh, some people out there who, who are eating at a ketogenic diet but not really hitting the mark, they're still eating lots of keto candy cakes, cookies, pies, no, bars, drinking keto, keto shakes. Those people yes. may still have some problems, but I think yes. that's because those things are occasional treats. They should not be part of a proper human diet on a daily basis. I agree. And yes. I that's a lot of people, if they say that keto is just not working for me, they it's either haven't given it long enough or they're still eating lots of keto baked goods and keto treats. And that, Look that's the majority of their keto diet because that's, that's yeah. not part of a real whole food ketogenic diet. Dr. Sives used to, tell, to, to treat these things uh, as uh, lookalikes. Yep. Stop the lookalikes. Yes. Because lookalikes aren't keto. Keto right. is meat, vegetables, is uh, food without package, unpacked food, real yes. food. Absolutely. So um, another thing I would like to ask you um, is the second major uh, doubt I received here uh, from my followers on Instagram page is about uh, uric acid. Because people come from a uh, crack diet, lots of fructose, beverage, beer, bread, and industrialized stuff, and get uh, high uric acid levels. And uh, they want to start low carb, and they discuss it with their doctors and with their mothers and fathers and friends, and everybody says that meat is dangerous, you shouldn't eat meat. So you shouldn't eat meat, you should eat bread. Bread must be good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> For your the doctor, please tell these people about this, the truth behind it. Yeah, so again, this is a false paradigm. Uric acid does not cause gout. That, that is not true. Your body makes uric acid every day. It, it is not dangerous. 
But if you're eating a high carbohydrate inflammatory diet, you can cause your uric acid levels to be elevated. Uric acid is not what causes gout, but your diet that's full of grains and full of fructose and full of sugars and full of alcohol, that's what causes gout. And I actually have a YouTube video about uh, this that goes into more detail and actually includes some of the research. But there's an old wood carving uh, from hundreds of years ago, and I use that as the thumbnail on my YouTube video because it, it is the picture of gout. And it, it is a painting of an old guy, and he's, he's morbidly obese. He's drinking wine. He's eating fruit. And, he, and he's, he's morbidly obese. And so he is literally, that, that's what causes gout, being obese, being inflamed, drinking alcohol, drinking fruit juices, drinking soft drinks, eating lots of highly processed grains. That's what causes gout. Eating meat does not cause gout. Um, another problem that we have in the first 34, 40 uh, days, uh, starting keto, uh, who has gout or even, um, um, Pedro nos rins, gente, esqueci o nome agora, kidney stones, kidney stones or gout, uh, in the beginning, the uh, uh, uric acid levels up a little bit because um, the ketones concur with the, the liberation by the kidney. So the the beginning the, uh, it get it worsens before cure. So people start it it's bad because it hurts. Uh, they get, got inflamed because of that, and then uh, oh it, it didn't work for me because the doctors should help the patient and tell them this. Yes, you can go. It's the best cure for this kind of problem, this issue. But you have to to uh, to stick to it till yeah. the end. Yes, uh, and I, I, I liken it to alcohol addiction. If you've been an alcoholic for years, right? And we all know drinking lots of alcohol every day, that's very bad for your health. We know that. But to yes. the alcoholic, think about it from their perspective. When they stop drinking alcohol for the first two weeks, does, does, does stopping the alcohol, does that make them feel worse or make them feel better? It makes them feel yeah, much, much the worse, right? They feel terrible. They feel like they're going to yes. die. And so if they had a misled doctor who didn't understand that the we're looking for the long-term solution here, we're not looking for just the next few days. If, if some silly doctor said, oh, my gosh, you, you look like you feel terrible, you should drink a big glass of wine. I think it'll make you feel better. And the alcoholic drank the wine. They'd be like, man, my doctor's so smart. I feel so much better now. But actually, <laughs> that made them worse, not better. And the yes. same goes for the, the person who's had gout in the past. When they convert over to a ketogenic or a carnivore diet, they may indeed have a flare-up of their gout as during the transition process. But I've had hundreds of people who used to have gout and are now eating a fatty meat-heavy ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet, and they have not had a gout flare-up in years. They just don't have gout flare-ups anymore. But they yes. have to suffer that one last flare-up as they transition, and now they're, they're basically gout-free. And I would, I would caution anyone who has gout to understand it's fruit juices, it's soft drinks, it's anything that contains fructose, fructose. it's alcohol, it's grains, it's, it's fat-free dairy. That's what causes gout flare-ups. Fatty meat yes. does not cause gout. I have a, a client who had cr a horrible crisis of uh, kidney stones and uh, after being tired of trying the traditional way of the doctor and after, and after the doctor told him uh, tell him to eat more fruits <laughs> lots of fruits and avoid meat <laughs> yeah. I, I, I convinced him to try keto and he's better than ever I've already shared his exam here on my feed it's the photograph of the exams and the, his story because it's amazing how, how much he has uh, improved just uh, shifting to ketogenic diet. It's fantastic. Yep. Uh, doctor, other thing I would like to, to talk to you uh, is uh, about your YouTube channel. Uh, people here that uh, are watching us, please go to YouTube channel. Dr. Barry have a fantastic YouTube. Uh, you, you, doctor, you have a, a didactic way to explain things, which I admire the most because 
uh, it's very important to translate this uh, hard stuff to uh, understandable language and you're fantastic doing that doing that and uh, you will uh, go to every kind of subjects around low carb lifestyle uh, carnivore ketogenic uh, all the the illness that worries people and doctors scares people <laughs> sometimes and it's it's very good to to count with your information you have a patron program i uh, i think i would like to say here that is very important for us low carb community to support each other uh, because we don't accept the big pharma and big industry food industry money and that's what differentiates us from the crap uh, food and the big uh, the, the stuff that's outside and yeah. i think when it's very important please tell people how is your program and uh, invite people to go there to your channel please yeah, so I think my YouTube channel has over 300 videos now about a wide variety of medical topics. And I talk about keto and carnivore and low carb, but I also talk about high blood pressure and diabetes and gout and kidney stones and uh, preterm birth and thyroid conditions. I try to talk about everything because I am a family physician. I am a primary care doctor. And so I was broadly trained in many different topics. And during my 20 years in the clinic, I, I, I took care of over 25,000 different people who had a broad range of medical diagnosis. So I don't limit my YouTube channel to just talking about low-carb keto carnivore. Uh, but but I'll, I'll tell you right now, your diet is the foundation of your overall health. If your diet is not proper then there are not enough pills at the pharmacy to make you healthy. If your diet is not proper, then you can't spend enough hours in the gym to fix your health. You have to fix your diet, number one. That is far and away the most important thing. And that's why that's the majority of what I talk about on the YouTube channel. Uh, I was, uh, there's a, a website called ProPublica where you can go and look up how much money doctors get from big pharmaceutical corporations and I'll, I'll send you the link to that but there are okay. doctors out there who get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year talking about cholesterol medication or talking and, and going to luncheons and getting their hotels paid for and and basically getting these huge checks from the big pharma corporations and i decided early on i didn't want to i didn't want to make extra money by getting a check from big pharma i would much rather get a tiny amount of money, $1 a month, $3 a month, $5 a month from people whose health I've actually helped. And so that's why I set up my Patreon is so that if I have helped your health, then you can, you can give, you can contribute to my cause and to what I'm doing and you can help yes. me to help more people. But yes. if I haven't helped you, then definitely don't, don't give me any money. But I think that when a doctor takes hundreds of thousands of dollars from big pharma, they're helping themselves and they're helping the drug company. They're not really helping their patients that much. Yes, yes, it's very good to count on that. And I think um, we should, uh, everybody that, that uh, consume information uh, should help. Uh, I think it's very important to support. Other thing I would like you to explain us is about, I, I saw in your Instagram page, you have a trademark of the proper human diet. Yeah. You have a formula for this. Yeah. What, and what are your thoughts? So human beings are, by design, low-carbohydrate animals. That's not, yes. I, the more you look at the research, that's really not up for, to, for debate. We are all the same species. Whether we're currently vegans or whether we're currently carnivores, we are all the same species. And by checking the, the metabolic lab test that we talked about earlier, and so the diet that makes your A1C normal, that makes your C-peptide normal, that makes your triglycerides normal, and it makes your HDL cholesterol normal, and makes all of your inflammatory markers normal. The diet that does that is the proper human diet. And in my experience, that is a diet that's very low in carbohydrates that includes some type of fatty meat. And that can be fatty seafood, that can, be, that can be crustaceans and mollusks and eggs and butter. And so I think someone can eat an ovo-lacto-pescatarian diet 
and it be part on the proper human diet spectrum. I think at the same time, there are tens of thousands of people who eat nothing but fatty meat. That's all they eat. And all of their numbers are perfect. Then that has to be on the proper human diet spectrum. And so you'll hear vegans talking about their diet and they'll say, oh, you know, I, I look how skinny I am. But skinny is only one marker of metabolic health because there are many people that can be thin on the outside and still have fatty liver and still have yeah. pre-diabetes. And so I would love to get the lab results of all these skinny vegans so I could show you, look at their insulin level, look how high it is. That's not healthy. Look at, look at their A1C, it's elevated. That's not healthy. Look how low their HDL is. Look how high their triglycerides are. That's obviously not the proper human diet or their lab values wouldn't be so abnormal. So they may have a normal total cholesterol and they may have a normal LDL cholesterol or even low because a vegan diet, eating a high carb diet will absolutely lower your total cholesterol. Dave Feldman proved that on the cholesterolcode.com website with his experiments. You can lower your total cholesterol hundreds of points by eating a high carb, low fat diet. But that does not mean that's a healthy diet. And so that's why I, and also there are a lot of people for the, that the word keto has a negative connotation, right? They've heard somebody talk bad about keto. So now keto has a negative taste in their mouth. And that's why I've started talking about this spectrum of low carb diets as the proper human diet. Yes. Because it's kind of hard to say, oh, I would never eat the proper human diet. That's dangerous. Uh, yeah. yeah, that just sounds silly if you say that. It, it's interesting because this name ketogenic diet is very attached to the, the this treatment made for uh, epilepsy. Exactly. There is a diet uh, with loads of fat, 90% yes. of the calories of fat. It's too much fat. So not 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 uh, the problem is not the fat. The problem is not, is, is the the absence of protein of a good quality nutritional quality of the classic ketogenic of 90%. So people that don't know the diet use, usually uh, makes this confusion, this mess about keto diet. They think yep. they, that that's what we eat and that's yes. absolutely not. Yep. So the name is a little bit tricky. I agree with you. This name you, you, you created is much better. <laughs> we should shift. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yes. Um, doctor, you're writing another book? Tell us about. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually, I'm working on three books right now. Uh, three? And, yeah, and so one is, is going to be tentatively called The Proper Human Diet and go into much detail about why I think there is a spectrum of a proper human diet and the things that belong in that spectrum and the things that absolutely do not belong in that spectrum. I'm also working on a diet called, or working on a book called This is 50, uh, because I, I'm now 51, and I feel better, and many people tell me I look better now at 51 than I looked and felt when I was 35. And so I really want people to understand that, that being in your 50s can be, in a, be, can be a, the most amazing decade of your life. It is not, I agree. You're, not, you're not an old person if you're in your 50s. You're only as old as you eat. You're only as old as you act. The, your 50s doesn't mean you're old and washed up. That means you're just now wise enough and smart enough to have some good fun in life and either not get caught or just don't do things that you shouldn't do. And so that, that guy, I'm working on that. And then I'm working on a, a, di a, a book about reversing type 2 diabetes with the proper human diet. Nice. Very nice. Um, Nutrition Network has recently uh, released a course of re diabetes reversal. I think this this uh, uh, issue is um, is very important to to be uh, uh, very um, um, uh, like I can I say we 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 need to start talking about this more. Yep. Virta Health is doing a great job. Yes, they are. People have has never heard about Virta Health here. In Portugal, in Brazil, just low carb people, folks that knows Virta Health. People don't know they are doing an amazing job reverting diabetes. Yep. Uh, traditional medicine says there is no cure for this, and they are curing just changing the food. Yes, and they actually have over, they have over three years of data now 
on patients who have reversed their type 2 diabetes, got off their medications, and have kept the type 2 diabetes either cured or in remission, however you want to talk about it, uh, for, for three years now. And so it's quickly becoming impossible for some of the naysayers out there to say, well, there's no long-term research yes. about keto. Uh, yeah, there's, there's three years of solid, uninterrupted research about keto and type 2 diabetes right now. None of those people have had any bad outcomes or bad side effects from keto, but they have put their type 2 diabetes back to normal. Yes, it's very hard to, to deny. We yes. have um, lots of uh, cases and studies and it's fantastic. I, I helped my mother to, to re, uh, make a remission of her pre-diabetes. So it's, it's not, not, not difficult. Uh, the last thing I would uh, uh, ask you to, um, about the life my doctor told me, uh, you're releasing a second edition, but I think I've already had this second edition. Yeah, the second edition is out now. It's available in all bookstores. And it, the second edition has five okay. extra chapters. It's got uh, better illustrations because I self-published the first edition. And uh, it sold so well that a, a publishing house picked it up and, and they wanted to revamp it and do a second edition. So it, it does very well on Amazon. It's available in all bookstores. There's also a Kindle version, if you like that better. And there's also an audible version in case you're spoiled like I am of, of listening to books on what audible. What kind of version? I, I don't understand. It's audible. So you can actually listen oh, to the book. Audible. Oh, yeah, yeah. Audible. And, 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 yeah. yeah. I love audible books. I almost can't read a regular yeah. book anymore. I have to listen to it on my, uh, with my headphones. Yeah, it's good. Uh, while you were working at home, cooking. Yep. Keto food, carnivore, yep. making a steak. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I have severe ADD, attention deficit disorder, so I can never do just one thing at a time. I always oh, have to be doing two, if not three or four things at a time. So I can be listening to an audio book while cooking a steak, while doing something else. Yeah. Dr. Barry, we stay in tune to, to wait for your books, to your release of, of these two books, which are, uh, which are going to be re released uh, first? Diabetes probably, or... uh, probably the proper human diet will be the next one to, to come out. And it's still, it's still several months away, but I'm, I'm trying to work feverishly on that book. Okay, I will. I'm looking forward to buy it and read this second book of yours. <laughs> Very good. So, doctor, uh, would you you would you to li would you like to say another thing that I I must uh, forget about? Anything you want to sh share here with us? Sure. So, yeah, really, I just want to repeat that if you are eating a proper human diet, then you almost can't get chronic disease. And if you are eating an improper, highly processed diet filled with grains and sugars and vegetable seed oils, no amount of medicine is going to make you healthy and no amount of exercise is going to make you metabolically healthy. Your diet is the foundation of your health or the cause of you being unhealthy. You have to fix your diet before you fix anything else. Yes, That's yes, it. yes. One last question here about um, um, uh, Metabolica Mente is a friend. She would like to, oh my God, she, I uh, would like to know, uh, I would like to know if I, uh, wait a minute, if I don't have access to grass-fed meat, I can compensate <clears throat> the higher level of omega-6 taking omega-3 supplementation if that's enough. You can, you can do that, or you can just eat, eat, put pastured butter on your steak. That's going to be a great source of omega-3 fatty acids. You can eat pastured egg yolks. I'll often yeah. put a couple of raw egg yolks on top of my steak as a condiment. That's going to raise your omega-3 fatty acid ratio. Uh, it, is, it is true that a grass-fed, grass-finished steak it has a higher omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. That's true. Ratio, yes, but even yes. eating the cheapest meat you can buy at the supermarket yes. is still a hundred times better for you than eating carbohydrates. And yes. so if all you can afford is the cheap ground beef or minced meat, if all you can afford is hot dogs and bologna and, and spam, 
you can still be much, much healthier eating that stuff than you're ever going to be eating whole wheat bread and eating uh, lots of carbohydrates. Refined grains and this stuff. Yep. Yes, yes. Yes, so, yeah, I believe I totally agree with you. Yeah, eat the best quality meat that you can afford, but never forget that meat is always the best option, regardless yeah. of the quality of the meat. It's always better than the grains, than the sugar, than the vegetable seed oils. The worst meat is better than the best grain stuff. Exactly. Yeah, I totally exactly. agree. And I always tell people to eat organ meat. It's yes. so important. And pastured eggs if possible, yep. pastured butter if possible, but yes. organ meat helps a lot. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, Dr. Maria, getting to the final of this hour live, I would like to thank you so much for being here on my Instagram page. Yes. Count on me whenever you need. And thank you. We'll be in your YouTube sharing, uh, watching your videos, in your Instagram uh, page here as well. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to meet you in person one day. Maybe we'll be able to travel again one day and uh, we can meet up and have a, a keto event somewhere in the world. Very nice. We have here in Spain a uh, low carb universe, but I don't know if we are going to have with COVID. I'm, I, with COVID, I'm not sure. With coronavirus. Uh, yeah, I was going to uh, I was going to come to that, but then you're yeah, I think it got canceled. Yeah. Yes, yes. But the next event, maybe in Sweet in Sweet Sweet Switzerland next oh, year. Okay. Perfect. Maybe they're gonna have an event there. If they have, we will chat. We will chat, yeah. and maybe. Yeah. We meet in person. Thank you so much for being here. And, and thank you. I'd like to thank to Camille who made the translation for me in the here in the space that she was uh, writing and translated almost everything for me. Thank you, Camille. Ah, thank you <laughs> thank so you much. Doctor. It's a pleasure yeah. seeing you. I'll talk to you next time. Yes, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Gente, vou deixar salvo. Obrigada, viu, pela presença de todos vocês. Vocês conseguiram entender? Se ficou alguma coisa sem entender, eu depois eu faço um... um... A Camille traduziu para mim. Traduziu. traduziu. É, a Camille traduziu. Depois eu vou fazer a... Se alguém não entender alguma coisa, eu faço um outro vídeo explicando o que ficou faltando aí. Mas eu acho que a Camille foi traduzindo tudo. Camille, você tem um dedo rápido. <risos> obrigada. Obrigada, Camille. Obrigada, gente, pela presença, viu? Então tá, vou desligar, vou, deixar, vou tentar, se o Instagram não me é, prejudicar aqui, eu vou tentar deixar salvo, tá bom? Vou tentar não, eu vou salvar. Obrigada, gente. Beijo.